I love embroidery. I love all things embroidery. This is using threads and beads. And this is the feather stitch, which is another one of my favorite little stitches that I use a lot. So I'm going to show you how to create this particular design. If you want to mark it, a lot of people do prefer kind of having a line showing where they want the feathery stitch to go. You can use a water soluble not a, or an air dry pin and draw that. I kind of like to just meander as I'm going just to you know, create my own little look. So what I have done is I have threaded an embroidery needle with some embroidery thread and you do need to put a knot at the very end and this is three strands. This probably would have worked with two or even one because this is a thicker thread but I decided I wanted a, a really dense look on my little vine. So I'm using three strands of embroidery floss. So I'm going to anchor this up here at the joint because I know I'm going to hide that with the, the baited ball. And because I have a knot, it could hold, but I still like to do another little stitch because I don't want this to ever come loose. So now I'm going to start my feather stitch. So I've anchored. So feather stitch, you can find how to do it in a lot of embroidery books, but it's, I like to do the right, left, right, left. So I've got my anchor here. Now I've come over to, let's say, point, I've anchored at A. I've come over at B, come out at C. And I'm going to pull that. And you'll see this in a lot of embroidery books and magazines on how to do the feather stitch. They have the A, B, and C. So now I'm going to go on the other side. So I want to come, oh, you know, a little over this way, going in at B, coming out at C again, and pulling that. And you're just going to keep meandering. You can make them shorter, longer, just kind of depends on the look that you want. And of course the thread loves to get hung up with her fingers. And there's just no way of getting around that. You can also notice, see, it's not attached. The arm is not attached to the doll yet. It's much easier to do all this work before the arms are attached. I do the same with the legs. The legs I won't put together or put on her until her shoes are done. So I'm just going to meander a little bit like this back and forth. And I'm just going to do a few more just so you get the feel of this. And I'm going to start turning my arm because I want to come around and I'm probably going to wrap around the arm like I did on Bernadette. So now I have my feather stitch. I want to add a little pop. So as you can see on Bernadette, I've added some beads to the feather at the end of each of the feather points. So I'm going to thread up a needle with some beading thread. I already have it. And I will anchor again up at that joint up here so that that is hidden eventually by the bead. I'm going to come in and go out at the end, the point of that feather, pick up a bead, go into the fabric, come over to the other feather, pick up another bead, go into the fabric, and over to the other feather. And I'll just do that all the way along my design. Now this is after I have completed the entire feather. But you can see how that just adds so much to the embellishment on the arm. When I got down to her hand, I wanted to give her a ring. And so you can see on her fingers here that I've added a little crystal 
to the end. I've wrapped the thread around, the embroidery floss around to create the look of a ring and then added a crystal at the end. And again, you would go through the crystal, add a stop bead back into the crystal and that anchors it. And I will show you how to do her fingernails too because I decided she needed to have very sparkly fingernails. So the next thing I'm going to do is over on this arm, on her tattoo or tat as they're called these days, I'm going to show you how to stamp on the arm and then how to do the beadwork to create that really beautiful look that she has on this particular arm. I love adding different Oh, designs and things to my dolls, especially you know, a tat or tattoo, and I don't wear them myself, but I do enjoy the embellishing part of it on a doll, and I think this is a really fun way of doing it. This is rubber stamped. This is, I, I will show you how to do that. I've used a rubber stamp, and it's one of my favorite designs by a cousin, Terry Medeiros, and it just really, I've used it quite often on many of my dolls, and you'll recognize it, especially in my beading book. So what I'm going to show you is how to stamp on an arm or a leg or whatever you want. You can do it on a body as well. So I've got a rubber stamp. This is a little different design. I decided I, I've used that one so much, I better change my little repertoire a little bit. And I've got a stamp pad. So what I will do is, and of course I've got the, a little blank arm. I do not like, for what I'm doing, I don't want to have a rubber stamp that's, that's on the wood block. And so if, it is, if there's a design I really, really like and it's on a wood block, I will put that in my microwave for 15 seconds and then peel the block off because the microwave will heat up the glue. So make sure if you're going to remove a some kind of a stabilizer on the back of a rubber stamp that there's no metal in it if you put it in your microwave. <laughs> okay, so I have my stamp pad and my stamp in my arm and I'm going to take the cover off of the stamp pad and what I'm going to do, I've decided I want to use this end of this particular stamp. So I'm just going to tap the image just that much with my rubber stamp pad. <laughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to pick that up and you don't have to do it immediately because it's not going to dry that fast. So this is the this part right here I believe I want on her hand. So I'm just going to angle this a little bit very carefully. Put that down making sure I'm not moving it. Then I'm going to wrap that around and press and wrap around and press and just very carefully pressing and then again carefully I want to release and there I have my image. So I'm going to put these a little aside and I have an arm already started over here. A lot of people say, how in the world do you do all those little squiggles? Very easy. Probably there's a different way of doing it, but this is the way I have found that works for me. As you can see, I've already started beading on this little doll. And I have another design right here that is a little squiggly. So you can see I have put some pins in. And it's important that you make sure that the pins are straight up because if they're at an angle at all you're going to get a little distortion. So that one I want to make sure these are all you know meaning straight up not angled like excuse me while I put that in there so you can see what I'm doing. So I have my straight pins. I haven't finished the entire design because I only want to do a section at a time because this is just easier, it, you don't get as much distortion. And see, so you can see, I don't know if you can see, this little bead has kind of a pico. I actually was working with too many beads. Some say seven to nine beads. 
because I'm using size 15 seed beads because I do want smaller beads when I'm working on a small arm. A larger doll I could go up to size 11's but this one I'm working with the, the smaller beads. So I can probably put on close to 20 beads on a string. And you, know, you can see I've anchored my thread. This is going to get covered with a larger design which I'll show you later on Bernadette. And so I can do all my anchoring underneath the larger design because that's going to be added last. I want to work around here first and then add my focal paint little point. So I've got my beads on here if I can find my thread. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this girl down, I'm going to wrap these beads around those pins and then pulling and then stopping right there and then you want to push those beads so that there's no gaps and now I'm going to anchor that by doing a back stitch and back stitch you will read a lot in embroidery because you will do a back stitch to anchor or couch down certain things. So a back stitch means I'm going backwards. I'm going to come back to about oh maybe four or five beads, come out underneath that line of beads and then I'm going to push that down and you can change the design as you're doing this too if you want a little more curves you can anchor that bead. Then I'm going to go in and out one of these, if I can find my bead here. <laughs> I think I need stronger glasses. So in and out that one bead to anchor it to the arm. So you can see now that's, that's anchored. And now I'm going to go back again, go underneath. I want to come out at this point where this pin is. And by the way, I should remove this, this pin now because it's just going to get in my way. So when you finish with a point, you want to remove that pin. So I'm now underneath this little point. So I'm going to go through two beads this time. And pull that. And now that's anchored to the arm and then I will continue doing that going back anchoring going back anchoring and when I've got it all anchored I'll go through those beads again come out and finish my design so that's bead embroidery it's very simple it's fun to do you can just sit and watch TV and just beat away and there's no hard thinking about it you're just anchoring that line of beads and now let me show you what I meant about the focal point on Bernadette. Over here on her arm you can see at the center here is this bead, this area here. I just created my own design. You could add a, a larger bead, you could add a, a, one of those Rivoli's which is a, a round crystal bead that you would then cabochon or bezel and or you could just do whatever you want. I know in one of my dolls I, I covered a washer and then beaded it and then that was the focal point. And you could do this on a leg and as I said too, you could do it on her body somewhere. Now that's just a way of adding a focal point. Once you have your embroidery done, now it's time to add those heat fix crystals. You can see I've got them scattered here and there on the arm and her fingernails because I decided she needed to have that blingy fingernails. So I'm going to show you how to apply those. They're just little crystals. They've got glue on the back. Now you can get crystals that don't have glue and then you can apply the glue. I'm just not very good at that. I much prefer using the heat fix. You can get a tool that has a little point that you add for, that picks them up and then melts the glue and then you plop it down which I'll show you in just a few seconds. But you can also iron them. So if you were let's say putting a large maybe a, a bunch of crystals on 
maybe a skirt or something, you can put the crystals down where you want them and then cover that with some parchment paper or whatever, you know, to protect the iron and then press. And you have, I think you have to hold it about six seconds and then that's enough to heat the glue and apply it. But that's for large pieces. For small little sections like we're doing, you're just going to use a little tool like this and there's so many of them. Uh, you know, it just depends on what you you like, I guess. So I'm going to take, I've already heated this up. I'm going to pick up that crystal and it just picks it up. You can look at it and you can see the glue starting to bubble up. Now I'm going to put that crystal right there so you want to just go plop, that's it. And you don't want to hold it because if you hold it too long then the glue kind of gushes up and gets on the point and then then you have to use, that's why I have a little needle because sometimes I, I I hold it too long and then I have to kind of push that crystal out. So let's do another one. Let's say I want this and make sure they're not too close together on the surface. So let's say I want this one and you do, you have to just have to watch and as it starts to bubble up then you know that you're ready and then you just straight down plop. Really, really easy. Fingernails, the same thing. I've just got one here for her fingernail, but you would just pick that up, let it bubble up, pick, decide on the finger, and oops. Oh, that's good. I didn't get it on my table. Oh, not very good today. I had too much coffee this morning. So there is her fingernail. But you can see I had time to kind of move that. So those are the heat fixed crystals. Really fun and easy to apply. And then you also notice over here on Bernadette, there's a few other little beads. I have a sew on crystal there. I've got some little sequins here and there. I also have some other little flower shaped beads here and there. So those you would just apply wherever you feel like you want to add a little more bling to her. So there's her arm all finished, the lower arm. And the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to use one shape circles to create the embellishments that you see on her bodice, her hat, her hat pin, and let's see, oh, her purse, I almost forgot. She wasn't holding her purse. So I'm going to show you how to create this lovely little purse with one shape, a circle.